celebration for black folks. All black folks. Trans black folks, those who are differently able, those who are deaf, women, right? Children, elderly. And if we're not doing it that way, we're not doing it right. This is an intersectional liberation struggle. We're not free until all of us are free and nobody gets left behind. That includes in our corporate jobs. How many folks here live in, uh, work in, in Hollywood in some capacity? Quite a few, quite a few. Yeah, uh-huh. We got work to do in Hollywood, for sure. Hollywood was founded on white supremacy and anti-indigeneity, mm -hmm. right? Sexism. There ain't no reason, you know, the Me Too movement and Time's Up highlighted that, right? You saw all these people coming down. They ain't come down yet for their racism. All right? Anti-blackness within the narratives that are spread across the world from Hollywood lead to violence against black folks. Glorification of police violence and corruption, celebrating police violence and corruption in some of y'all's favorite movies and shows leads to that number that we're talking about, a thousand black fo or a thousand folks, citizens being killed a year disproportionately black and brown and indigenous. Propping up these systems of capitalism through our narratives and our lifestyles. We've got a lot of work to do. We shouldn't just wait until black folks are present to liberate them. That work goes on when they're not present. You get what I'm saying? The work goes on, if you don't see no black people in the room, that might be the problem. You need to speak up there. In every, I'm talking about in every industry, not just Hollywood. Power needs to shift and it's already happening. COVID, we're not gonna come back from COVID the same as we went in, right? But we have to make sure that we institutionalize liberation during this time. Yes. In the same way that they created systemic oppression, we need to create systemic liberation. We need to make sure that in every single room, liberation is not only being considered, but fought for. That's how we create a culture of liberation. We can't ever forget our purpose in those spaces. We got to fight to continue, and we're going to do that. Make sure y'all go, like he said, and tell five of your, tell 10 of your friends, 20 of your friends, right? All of your friends. And the last thing that I, yes, all of your friends. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know. Some people don't have more than 10. You know what I'm saying? But every single one that you have, and your family, and whoever else, drag them along. And the last thing I'll say, y'all know this election is coming up. Y'all make sure y'all follow Reimagine LA. Reimagine underscore LA. We got a chance to make history with moving an unprecedented amount of money to our communities, to community care. But with this election, some of y'all might have heard me say this already, but I ain't up here supporting Democrats or Republicans. To be completely honest, both are trash institutions that were formed because of oppression. Voting as a system was founded in this country on white supremacy and genocide. But our ancestors, liberation ancestors, I got many ancestors. Some of them I'll be like, fuck you, okay? 
All right. But I got some liberation oriented ancestors that I like to champion, right? Fuck them other ancestors. So we call on those ancestors, those liberator ancestors, right? And talk about the work that they did to hijack the systems, hijack the systems that were created like voting. So we have to overwhelm the polls, right? We have to overwhelm with liberation. Up until the election, we got to push to make sure that this, um, I'm not going to say progressive, that this, this agenda is as progressive as possible, the platform as progressive as possible. I'm talking about as abolitionist as possible, as radical as possible, as liberatory as possible. And we have to overwhelm them at the polls with that type of work and that type of call so that whoever gets in office, in any office, especially the president, knows that they better be scared as fuck. Because we'll apply that same amount of power staying in the streets. It's not just about going to the poll and casting that vote. It's the work that happens up till then to organize community for liberation so that we create infrastructure moving forward to hold them accountable. That's the work. That's what's important. We get people to the polls because there are important measures and such that can change lives. And we want to make sure that they hear our voice by the numbers that we come out, right? But the work to create the infrastructure to move forward, to liberate, is the most important part of that process of getting out the vote. Yeah. We make sure that we touch every single person, bring them into this liberation movement and go and make it loud and clear why we're there and that we're not satisfied even with what we're voting for. Yeah. And that this is just the beginning and we will show up at your front door and hold you accountable if necessary. And we will take unprecedented measures and fight by any means necessary to liberate our folks. And we are going to protect our folks by any means necessary. They got scared because people started burning shit down, burning police uh, stations down, burning police unions uh, offices down, right? That shit ain't over. I'm not saying I'm going to set a fire, calm down, Do it. but I'm not saying that I won't. Yeah. If it means the liberation of my people, I got 22 nieces and nephews, and I'll be motherfucking damned if one of them get pulled over and I got some work to do outside of the work that I'm already doing. All right? We gonna end this shit now. Defund the police. 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 Defund the sheriff. Defund the sheriff. Defund the sheriff. Defund the sheriff. We see them all. See they hide now. They hide. Y'all see them over here on the sidewalk. Now they hiding with that shit. But y'all see these motherfuckers wasting money here. They all up. They behind the columns and shit behind these doors. They there. They there wasting money. We got work to do. So I want y'all to get it in y'all spirit. Say fuck the police. Fuck the police. 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 Say fuck the sheriff. 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 Say fuck Garcetti. Fuck Garcetti. 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 Raise your fist and make it pop. Everybody say. Say raise your fist and make it pop. Everybody say. Fuck Donald Trump. Say it. Everybody say. Say it. Everybody say. Say raise your fist and make it pop. Everybody say. Jackie Lacey must go. Jackie Lacey will go. Say Jackie Lacey must go. 
Say Jackie Lacey will go. Jackie Lacey will oh, go. Oh, shit. I see somebody walking up. They're about to fuck some shit up. Hold on. Ain't never too late to the party. A modern day liberator. A dynamic speaker. An amazing all around human being. A mother in the movement. Y'all, y'all know some powerful. Y'all, we gotta continue. Y'all committed to fucking this shit up? Say fuck this shit up. 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 We about to fuck this shit up. Say fuck this shit up. D from the police. D from the police. All right, y'all ready for this liberator? Three years 
to go. And we be damned if we give it back. You know why? We're not even allowed in the building. In this building. Neither one of us can go in there. What kind of shit is that? We can't even go in there. I barely know what it looked like inside that damn building. Do y'all know what it looked like? No. Okay, because we've been shut out. So since we've been shut out, we take a space out here. And we must not give this up. We can't give this up. This is our spot. Who's straight? Our street. Who's straight? Our street. Who's straight? Our street. Who's straight? Our street. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Next up is one of the best speakers in the world. Make some noise for an international activist, liberator, BLM family, BLM activist, international Toronto board bread coming through to LA to lend a blessing on us right now. Future! Hello, family. I missed you last week. <laughs> I just got back from Portland. You! It's a war zone out there in the night. In the daytime, it's a city like any other. And after 70 plus days of continued protest, it is a norm to put on a helmet so you aren't, you aren't struck in the head with a projectile you don't see coming, to wear goggles to protect your eyes and a respirator, gloves. Some are in hockey stick, wear, uh, travel with hockey sticks so that they can hit the tear gas canisters back. I found myself quite suddenly in a war zone. And this is what I need you to understand. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. I went to a city where I previously had zero connections and because we are bound by something deeper, more meaningful, a belief system, a set of values, I was able to make family very quickly because that is what Black Lives Matter is. And that is what all of you are. Because when we talk about the movement, we're no longer accepting allies or accomplices or any other cute term. Because when we look back on this 20 years from now and they say the movement, they're going to be talking about you as much as they're talking about us. You are the movement. And we are everywhere. And I went out there and people who I hadn't known previously were at my six and they were in my front and they were looking out for me as if they had known me their whole lives. The way that we look out for each other after a 15 hour drive, which by the way, looked like a lot less on paper. <laughs> About 14 hours in, I felt like I was Odysseus and maybe I had just lived in that car my whole life. And we were just lost forever. I got in at about 2 a.m. I went to bed at 3.30 and when I woke up this morning, there was a call to action because Melina, in her home, had picked up her phone and put on her live. And there outside of her home were dozens of police with armed rifles pointing them at her and her children and their home. And I want you to understand the terror and how often that is the reality of this work. That all it takes is one moment, one time, one pullover. One resentful police officer, one careless one, one time, one second. And on my way over here, there was a man who was struck 
off his motorcycle by a car and he lay on the street and that's why I was late. You see, this isn't about activism anymore. That's not enough for what you do and what we do, the defenders of the dead and the liberators of the living. This isn't about activism, this is about being alive. It's about life and fighting for it and living it. It's the life that you and I and we have been denied. It's the life that has been stolen and the lives that are almost stolen. And so when we say we have to protect each other, it is not, it is not just a slogan. It is not just a line. Because just like Portland, this city in only a matter of seconds can become a war zone too. In fact, it already has at different points in time. And the work that we're building together and the work that we're doing now, it's so that we can be prepared when that moment comes and I promise you it is coming. And remember, remember, if you're not using your pain, your pain is using you. And so we are bound together and we're united and we're not accepting this idea that some lives are worth more than others. And we're not putting dollar values and dollar signs on each other because we understand that capitalism funds racism and we understand what this city and what this country has been telling us. We don't want handouts, we want handovers. And so much of our work together and so much of our relationship to each other is informed by shame and this idea that we are not enough. We don't work hard enough. And remember, remember, poverty is on purpose. Poverty is on purpose. They incentivize racial apartheid, segregation. And too many of us will forfeit a part of who we are to fit into a system, into an entity that we didn't build, but we've become the bearers and protectors of. You see, that's what it means. Remember, complacency is the death of the soul. We can't trade creature comforts because it decays our hearts, our minds. Right. Are you with me? Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. So this is not just activism anymore because remember, activism doesn't build character. It reveals it and you are the revelation so that we can have the revolution. Don't ever minimize what you're doing here today and every day. And I know like you, like us, so much of this work is done in ways where it's not seen. And that's why so many of us come. It's to witness each other's pain and to witness the pain of these grieving families. And so we have to come together every week so that we can honor each other, so that we can bear witness. Remember that this love that we're building so many of you have been denied love. We have been denied love. And so we have to love each other with the love that we've so long been denied, that we have so longed for. Because when you don't know what to do, do what you know. And all activism really is for showing up for people in the way that you desperately wish that someone had shown up for you. That's it. That's it. And so I ran out of that house and I got in that car and I drove like there were wings on my feet and wings on those wheels and I got to that house and thank God, thank God. There were other people there, some of you in this crowd. Melina stepped outside of her house when all those police officers were holding up their rifles because she would not risk the lives of her children. And she said, I have a phone. It's a phone. And the way that they spoke to her, they knew who she was. Right. They knew who she was. Because anyone who's doing the work, anyone who's doing the work of protecting life, like police claim to, would never feel so entitled, would never walk into someone's home stand there with armed rifles and say, you should be thankful. What? You should be grateful. Yes? yes? And so we deserve something better, something greater, something bigger. And I need you to understand that that is what you are doing here. You, the foundation layers and the brick layers for the world that we 
are building because remember, somebody imagined shackles on black wrists. And enough people believed it to make it true. Somebody imagined borders. And enough people believed it to make it true. Somebody imagined police. And enough people believed it to make it true. So we have to be the disruptors of truth in our lifetime. The diviners of change. And they will always tell us, they will always tell us that you are not enough and your work is not enough and there are not enough of you, but I want to remind you that has always ever been in history a small group of people that have made changes. And every change that's happened, not a single one of them was given. We won it. Right. We earned it. We fought for it. Right. We took it. Right now, an executive order was signed by a monstrosity of a president, and in that it was $400, which is $200 less than what people had before, and out of that, 25% has to come from states, which means that each and every state will have to want to provide those resources, and a new system, an actual system will have to be built to get that money to people who have been paying into protection their entire lives, right? a protection that is precarious at best. And some of you and some of us, millions of people across this country are facing mass evictions. They are going hungry and they are worried. And we are so, so small. We have, made, we have been made so small by the stigma of poverty, the stigma, the shame. I'm going to tell you something. If, if wealth was about hard work, single mothers would be the wealthiest people in this country. Undocumented people would be the wealthiest people in this country. And at a time when the people are bailing out billionaires and mega corporations, every time I see a tear gas canister thrown at people, every time I see federal agents and police and riot gear and helicopters, like I saw swirling Molina's house this morning, that is food out of people's bellies. That's red money. And the people, the people that would have us believe that we are not worth it. Like our mayor. Like Lacey. Like our governor. Like our president. And like this whole administration. They would have you believe and they would have us believe that we are not worthy of protection because I'm going to tell you even, even if, even if those in our decaying democracy in late stage capitalism would claim that they are fighting for us, they adjourned over a weekend when people were hungry and people were unsure because we have allowed this system to get so hideous in its treatment of people that we are feeling like we have to beg as we live in periled lives and we and you and I we have to reckon with each other we have to reckon with the truth that the system that we've been paying into our entire lives yes. has not once ever paid into us. Yeah. And people protest when politicians and policies and police have failed to protect them. So, you must never stop because remember, every time that we are coming together here, we are sharpening our iron. Because iron sharpens iron and what I saw out there is what I saw here. I want you to know that people in other places in this country look to this city with envy because of people like you. They look to you as the leaders. They say, how do you get people to come out there every week? And I say, I don't get them to come out anywhere. We don't make you come. You receive the call, a call into a higher purpose, a call into living your full life, and you answered. And every day we choose to live. And every day we choose life. 
Activism is not big enough for what we do anymore. And Melina went to a press conference after she made sure that her children were well and protected because she understand what her priority was after her children, which was making meaningful change. Remember that this work calls those who are deeply in pain. Yes? Yes. And that's exactly why we're here. We're a witness for them too, for all of us. We are the despised of the despised. We are the forgotten. And so we must always remember each other. And we must always remember days like this. Because remember, our job isn't to make people see the light. Our job is only to be it. And to come as you are. Yes. Yes. Because you are enough. Yes. And you are enough and you've always been enough. And so we have to remind people what enough looks like. Yes. And what it feels like. Because they can't stop the revolution, and black liberation is the solution. Yes! Never again will we accept that we are too small. We are mighty. We are lions. And our leaders are cowards. And at a time when people are hungry, oh, we're also hungry for justice. And so we're going to fight for it. That's right. And we're not going to allow capitalism to determine which one of us is worth protecting anymore. And when the time comes, and it will come, and when the call is made again, like it was made today, and you're here, and like it was made this morning, you will be there. You will show up. And when you make the call, we will show up. We will be arm in arm and shoulder to shoulder because we stand at the crux of change or catastrophe. And we chose change. We chose power. Yes. Yes. So anytime that you have doubt, anytime that you're unsure that what you're doing is enough, and anytime you are afraid, Come back here and we will tell you who you are. The way that you tell us who we are because there are some parts of us, maybe the godlike parts that can only be accessed through others. This work is about finding out who we truly are and what we're truly made of. We, the despised of the despised. We, the defenders of the dead and the liberators of the living. We, the forgotten and the thrown away. And so, let it be known you, the unclaimed, and the formerly unloved. Because, again, the only people who come out to protest are those who know pain and suffering. You are claimed. You are claimed. We are claimed. And now, and every week, and every day, we have to hold that close and hold each other closer so that we are ready when it counts. And so that we can continue to be ready when it counts. Thank God for Melina. The closest thing to the grace of God that exists in this world. Thank God for protecting each other. Thank God for purpose. This is deeper than religion. This is the supernatural. The thing that comes together when we are together. Because this work, it takes away a lot. Yeah, I know some of you have already lost people. It strips the excess and it strips you bare. But what it gives you back is so much more. What it gives you back is your life, your meaning, and what it gives you back is family. We're family. And so we'll fight for each other like we're family. And we'll protect each other like we're family. 
And this is a champion, a champion of the cause, a mother, a revolutionary, a freedom fighter, a powerhouse, a blessing. Thank you, Melina, for loving us. Thank you for always showing up for us. Thank you for loving your children the way that you do, grieving mothers, those of us who have been forgotten. A revolutionary. Thank you, Melina. Thank you, Melina. Thank you, Melina. Yo, what's good, everybody?